May thy knife chip and shatter. Whenever filmmakers take creative leaps away from their source material, the final product can often suffer. However, there are times when making changes to the original improves the movie substantially. Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2 is a perfect example of this, as he made several changes to Frank Herbert's Dune, but these all appear to have made the film much better. We're breaking them all down, but warning, major spoiler alert for Dune Part 2 if you haven't seen it yet. One of the most notable differences in Dune 2 lies in his timeline. Unlike the novel's two-year jump from the fall of the House of Atreides, Villeneuve's sequel unfolds directly after the events of its predecessor. It was an interesting choice for Villeneuve to forego the time jump, as he split the film in the perfect place for us to pick up after Paul had spent two years living among the Fremen. However, Villeneuve's decision makes sense as it allowed us to continue exploring Fremen culture by watching Paul adapt to their ways as well as put us right back in the story where we left off. Dune Part 2 also omitted a few characters from the original material, including Hera, the late Jamis' wife and their children, the Fur Hawat, a counselor to Leo Atreides who survived the Harkonnen attack in the books and was forced to work for them, and Count Fedrig, an assassin and husband to Lady Margaret who was assigned to hunt down Paul. Villeneuve likely decided that adding these characters would have overstuffed the plot and muddied up the narrative as many of their stories were redundant compared to characters that were already in the film. One of the best changes Villeneuve made from the books involves Zendaya's character Shani. In the books, she and Paul do become involved, but she bears a child who is tragically killed by the Harkonnens. Due to the time jump changes, Denis likely decided not to include her pregnancy or the death of their son, although in the books it played a large role in Paul's decision to drink the water of life and ascend to become the Lisan al-Gaib. Throughout the movie, Shani questions the religious beliefs of the Fremen, challenging their need for an outside messiah and believing her people should liberate themselves. This honestly is the best part of the change that Villeneuve makes because it creates an engaging tension throughout the film as Shani fights for her people but hates the way that Paul and the Fremen are going about it. This culminates in her dramatic exit at the end of the film as she rides away on a sandworm when Paul takes Princess Arulan as his wife and declares himself emperor. In the book, the decision is seen more transactional and Shani understands and decides to remain his concubine. But in the film, Villeneuve makes us feel as betrayed as Shani does as the power Paul has seized has made him into the very thing she feared. However, no doubt the biggest change in story was the role of Aaliyah Atreides compared to the book in the film. David Lynch's 1984 Dune is more faithful to the book in this regard as Aaliyah is born during the two-year time jump and possesses the memories and abilities of all the Bene Gesserit reverend mothers before her. However, Villeneuve likely decided it was a little jarring to see a three-year-old acting like an adult such as when she kills Baron Harkonnen, so he decided to have Lady Jessica, played by Rebecca Ferguson, pregnant for the entire film, and Paul ends up being the one to kill the Baron and avenge his father, which ended up being much more fitting. We did see Aaliyah in the future, portrayed by Anya Taylor-Joy in a vision that Paul has, for an exciting glimpse of what's to come in the next film. A few other changes Villeneuve made, such as Gurney enacting his revenge and killing Raban, as well as the fight sequence between Paul and Fayed, also improved the film. But did you notice any other changes from the film to the book that we didn't mention? Feel free to leave your comments and thoughts below, and as always, happy watching.